I'm Mark Evanstein with music.py, and in these videos, I'm going to be showing you how to connect Python to Ableton. Okay, so here's where we left off last time. We were playing a few notes from Python using the scamp libraries. And each of these parts, the drum, theremin, and bass part, are being sent via the IAC bus to channels one, two, and three. And in Ableton, we've got three MIDI tracks, a drum, a theremin, and a bass part, receiving on the IAC bus on channels one, two, and three. So in this video, we're gonna make a slap bass part. So to get our feet wet, I've got this really simple script here. Uh, we're creating the bass part as before. And what it does is, while true, so this means do this forever, we're gonna loop through these different volumes, 0.1 up to 1.0. And remember, these are gonna to correspond to the MIDI velocities, zero to 127. For each volume, we're gonna have the bass play a note on MIDI pitch 50 for an eighth note. So let's take a listen to this. So you're noticing that some of the quieter dynamics, you're getting a dead stroke, and then you get kind of an open sound, and then at the very top, you get a slap sound. Um, so I'm gonna go over to Ableton over here. We can actually see uh, what's driving this if we click on the velocity button here. We can see the, the mapping from velocity uh, to sound. So I'm gonna just shape this a little bit. Um, I'm no expert here, but I'm gonna make maybe the glide and slap come down a little bit. Notice they're starting to happen on lower velocities now. And I'm gonna crossfade them a little bit. Crossfade out the open part and the palm sound. And then maybe I'll have this open part extend a little bit lower, overlap with the dead stroke sound, and crossfade these a little bit too. So now you can see it's it's changing more smoothly from one state to another. It doesn't feel as much like a sharp change from one sound sample to another sound sample. Anyway, I show you this as just an example of how powerful this combination is between Python and Ableton, because you can do all of your scripting over here in Python, figure out which notes to play and when, and in Ableton, you can sculpt the actual sound itself. But speaking of which notes to play and when, um, let's explore that. So I'm commenting out that simple volume check, and what I'm gonna comment back in here is a list of bass pitches, volumes, and durations. And so what we can do in Python is we can say uh, for pitch volume dir in zip bass pitches, bass volumes, bass durs, bass dot play note, Bass pitches, bass volumes, bass stirs. And what the zip function does is it's kind of like a zipper merge in a freeway. It takes one from each and then one from each and then one from each and then one from each. So we're gonna get this pitch with this volume with this duration and then this pitch with this volume and this duration. And so this is kind of a way of specifying a baseline. Let's take a listen. And now I'm realizing that I should have written pitch here, volume here, and dir here. We're not trying to pass it the whole list, we're just trying to pass it the one that we get each time. Let's surround this in a wow loop too, so that we can hear it over and over as a loop. Now let's take a listen. So it sounds pretty good to me. I might mix in a little bit more of that slap sound in the mid velocities. Let's take a listen. Great. By the way, if you're intrigued by this combination of Python and music, consider taking my course on cadenze.com. It's a totally beginner-friendly way of learning Python while making music in the process. So now down here, I have a little bit more complicated version of this. I'll walk you through it real quick. Don't worry if you don't understand all of the details. 
Basically, what I want to do is I want to play a sequence of bass measures, which are getting longer and longer. So at first we play just two of the pitches, then three, then four, then five, then six, then seven, then eight, then all the way up to the end. And we're kind of looping through as the measures get longer and longer and longer and longer. So it's a function called play bass measure. It takes a number of notes to play. But then what we're going to do is we're going to take the first num notes of bass durs, and we're going to call that partial durs. And then this horrible looking code right here, basically what this is doing is making sure that if, say, we get these three notes, 0 0.75, 0 0.25, 0 0.25, I'm okay with a measure that's 1.5 long, but I don't want a measure that's 1.25 long. And so what this is doing is it's saying, hey, if the sum of the durations isn't an even multiple of 0.5, then add just a little bit so that it becomes an even multiple of 0.5. So in this case, it would turn that 0.25 into a 0.5 then this is exactly like what you saw above right here. It's just playing through the pitches, the volumes, and the durations, except it's not all the durations, it's partial durs, that little slice of it that we took earlier. If you remember in Python, zip stops after the shortest list runs out. So if there's three notes, partial durs is gonna be three notes long, and so this is only gonna play three notes. And so down here, while true, do this forever, we're gonna go from num notes being two to being the length of bass durs we're going to play a bass measure of that length. So it's going to play a two note measure, then a three note measure, then a four note measure, then five, six, seven, all the way up to the length. Let's take a listen to this. There it's repeating again. Next time, we're going to make the drum part using cellular automata. By the way, you can find all the code for this video series in the description, and you can get early access to the whole series, as well as other fun stuff, at my Patreon. Although, of course, the real reason to subscribe to my Patreon is to support the years of work I've put into Scamp. But hey, bonus stuff is nice too.